I think there might be a few others still to join, but I think we've got the majority of participants going. Welcome, everyone. Yeah, nice good day. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, thanks for joining in on tonight's conversation, which is, I suppose, a bit of a conversation, but we do have a couple of uh, things to present. A couple of guest speakers, I guess you'd say, um, is uh, I'll announce them in just a few minutes. But it's, it's a, I think, a, a really good topic to talk about tonight. And uh, we found ourselves with a empty spot um, to talk about rather than what we often talk about is what upgrades we can do to our cars to, to get them to perform a bit better. I guess tonight's really about focusing on uh, us as drivers and uh, what we can do to be a part of that equation of the driving experience. So um, certainly uh, I think this is a great topic for our club because I know that when I talk to people during the EMRs um, and at other opportunities, a few out in the club that are a bit intimidated by their cars or perhaps haven't maybe explored the car at the limits and uh, might feel a bit nervous about it. Or maybe there's also a few uh, that are, are interested in motorsport but not really ready to take a step in that direction. So uh, what we're gonna do is share a few experiences and uh, have a bit of a chat about what we can do as drivers, what opportunities there are for us to improve our skill as drivers and the whole driving experience. Mm -hmm. Now, I am looking for someone on board. I don't know whether he's joined us. Oh yes. We have got people on board. I can see Bruce and Kevin. Hey, Kevin. Hi, right, Bruce. Gonna... Where are you hiding? How are you going, Kevin? Yeah, I'm, yep. I'm going fantastic. Thanks for thanks for the invite. Yes. So I'm going to introduce you uh, very briefly uh, to everyone before we get into the content. Uh, Kevin, who you may see on your screen, depending on how you've got this viewed. Uh, Kevin runs Driver Dynamics at Sandown Racetrack. So uh, I'm very grateful for him to join us tonight. Thanks, Kevin. He's gonna talk to us a bit about what he offers and what he will be doing in 2021 for our club specifically. Uh, also, Bruce, who's no stranger to the club, a member. Bruce has uh, got a presentation for us. And um, as the president of the MSCA, he's always got some good information to share us. But there's a program within the MSCA that uh, we want to talk a little bit about tonight specifically because it really um, uh, sits well with this topic about improving our skills as drivers. So, uh, first of all, I know uh, uh, for a lot of you that normally join us, you've been very well behaved and actually gone on to um, mute. But I'm going to allow you to unmute yourself and uh, maybe share your views on your experiences. Uh, maybe you might want to just tell us what it is that you would like to achieve as a driver, what it is that holds you back from uh, getting the most out of your Lotus. Or maybe you've had an experience with driver training before that you'd like to share that you realized through that that um, experience, uh, something that you didn't know before. Anyone want to share? Mm -hmm. Don't all answer at the same time. Um, driver dynamics with, with Kevin. I, I actually um, paid for my son and my daughter to do his course and I went along with my son and uh, without getting into politics, I think it's one of those things that it should be compulsory for, uh, you know, people when they're learning to get their license. It's one thing to teach them how to drive a car and how to back one. But I think the, the courses that Kevin does from um, driver training is fantastic, especially for our younger people. Um, so I would, if you've never done an advanced driving course um, or your, your children haven't or your grandchildren, it's, I think it'd be a wonderful Christmas present because um, i I got a lot out of it myself and certainly my kids got a lot out of it. And uh, so that's probably my experience with, with Kevin's um, program. It was fantastic. Bruce? 
<laughs> you can pay me later. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bruce. Uh, yeah, Guy here, Vicky. Um, I've done quite a few um, training, driver training courses. Um, I think it was all after I bought my Esprit, um, but it was just knowing that I had a high performance car and basically what to do in emergencies. And this was before I went onto the track. And um, doing, yeah, yeah, for example, before doing any kind of training, um, I would have been, you know, the typical sort of driver that if there's an emergency ahead, you'd just stand on the brakes and you'd hear the tyres squeal and ending up in a crunch. And you don't know until you do training. And of course, these are in cars without ABS. You don't know without doing training about, you know, the easing off on the brake pedal and that kind of thing is will actually pull you up shorter than standing on it harder. And to the training that's done initially, you know, in defensive driving, then is all about um, how quickly you can stop, um, how quickly you can't stop. So it helps you judge distances and so on. Um, swerving and avoiding and what happens to your car if it gets unbalanced and all those sort of things, which is why, um, you know, I, I learned so much initially um, just about, you know, really it teaches you what happens when it, things go wrong. Um, after I did the initial defensive driving course, I then did the advanced driver course, um, which by that stage I've been on the track. So it um, just taught me a bit more about, you know, a bit more refinement about track work. Uh, finally, then I did the uh, a Lotus driver day at um, Hethel when I was on holidays, um, probably back in 2007, 2008. And um, whilst a lot of that was about um, driving fast and getting a quick time around, the, uh, around their track, um, one of the things that they did teach us how to do was, because um, I guess it happens a lot in England, uh, going round a roundabout and the backslides out. How do you catch it and what do you do and things along those lines. And being able to do that kind of stuff, you know, spin your car, lose control of your car in a safe environment um, was just great because it means you get to recognize when it's going, what, what's going to happen. So that when you're in normal driving situations, it, um, you recognize the problem before it happens. Um, and then, you know, that, that's just being a good driver on the road. The same sort of things then translate to the track, but it's just a whole different world. And that's what MSCA come and try days are all about. But I know, um, you know I, I really do think the, um, the money I invested in, at, you know, both defensive and advanced highway driver training was, was money well spent, um, just simply because of the fact that it makes you a more confident driver. And certainly I now know when I'm in a car with someone who hasn't done those kind of things, uh, sometimes I might be a nervous passenger, but uh, if... Uh, if they're not following the same sort of practices. But yeah, I, I, I agree with it. Um, someone earlier on uh, for family members who haven't done those sort of things. Absolutely fantastic um, Christmas present. Thanks, Guy. Yeah, I, I think confidence is a, a, a really important part of this uh, opportunity. Um, and it could be a combination of things. Driver training really does help to improve your knowledge of your vehicle, what it can and can't do, or you know what to do in certain situations. But definitely uh, all of the collection of all of these experiences helps to grow our confidence. So uh, I'm really pleased that Bruce raised that it's for uh, people starting out for the first time. It's really, this sort of stuff is for anyone. So I'm, I'm glad we've had that conversation already about um, it being suitable, not just for, people with fast cars that, you know, want to go on the racetrack, but everyone that drives on the road. Anyone else want to share their experience or give any comments? <coughs> Simon here. Um, red, red balloon, uh, 
if you buy gift badges for Red Balloon, um, they uh, have access to driver training at Sandown. Not sure whether it's the same one there, Kevin. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Yeah, we've um, we've had the the Red Balloon Adrenaline contract uh, since uh, 2005. I just happened to have a red balloon voucher that I was thinking of spending in that direction. So uh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, maybe that's a good segue for you, Kevin, to explain a little bit more about uh, what you offer, what you uh, understand from all of your many years experience now at offering this stuff, uh, what you see are the benefits and um, yeah, the sort of thing that we can expect to, to get perhaps some, um, uh, on a date next year, still to be decided when we can join you. Yeah, cool. Um, for those of you that know me, uh, my name's, most people just call me Big Kev or Kev. Um, I, um, I started, uh, um, I used to be a racing car mechanic a long time ago. Um, and I gave that up when I was about 24. Um, too many uh, Saturday nights repairing smashed up racing cars while the while the racing drivers were out disco dancing and uh, <laughs> enjoying the fruits of uh, my labours and then um, picking up smashed up racing cars again on Sunday afternoon. So uh, I soon got sick of that. Um, and a couple of the guys that um, were sort of um, that I knew through racing were working um, with uh, the old Jim Murcott. Uh, driving school back in those days um, and I joined I started work Jim Jim um, I was a little bit destitute at the time as a 24 year old and um, Jim said I can give you one day's work so um, I started with Jim in 1989 and that's when um, Peter Brock joined us uh, just after that uh, and so I worked with um, I worked with Pete, uh, uh, he worked with us uh, uh, like quite often as a regular up until about uh, 97 or so. Um, and I started at the same, not, not long after that, uh, this young bloke started with us. He used to turn up in his, um, he had a white and green uh, Ford uh, Cortina, 67 Cortina sedan. And he used to do burnouts out the front and all this sort of stuff. And Jim was always going mad at him. Um, you've probably never heard of him. That was a guy called Craig Lowndes. I don't know whatever happened to him. I think he's, um, I, I never thought he'd amount to very much. He's probably sleeping on a park bench somewhere. Um, so I was really lucky that when I started, I ended up, I started with some pretty big names and, um, uh, I'd like to say that I pretty much learnt from the best guys in the business. Um, so I worked my way up and um, I worked with Jim. I, I was working with Jim until the day he died. Um, and he had me doing the, um, the the Formula Ford experience there. We, re we used to run a Formula Ford experience with uh, one of Craig's old cars and um, uh, Gary Brabham's old Formula Ford. Um, we used to run that on the infield. Some of you guys might remember the old infield circuit at Sandown. We used to run that uh, there. Um, then uh, defensive driving courses and advanced driving courses and that sort of thing. And and at the time we won uh, in the mid sort of the by the mid nineties we were running the Holden Fleet Drive Day and Holden was a big company then, if you can remember back. Uh, biggest selling cars in Australia at the time. We were running the Holden Fleet Drive Days around Australia, um, as well as we also won the what was called the Das Fleet contract uh, at the time, which was 16,000 drivers we had to put through over a three-year period. So, um, for example, in 1996, I slept at home. I still remember I slept at home for 95 nights in 1996. That's uh, how often we were away. Uh, running courses and as I said I, I was I was with Jim uh, up until the day he died um, in 2001 so I started off on my own then which at the time was probably the silliest decision I've ever made in my life because it was a lot harder to create uh, a business a driving school business in those days than what it is now with all the internet and social media and stuff um, 
and effectively our day in day out stuff is defensive driving we put depending on the year it's not going to be a very big year this year but depending on the year we put uh, up to 10,000 drivers a year through our defensive stuff uh, and that's pretty much any driver um, we do advanced driving courses um, we do the track days some of you guys would have done our track days before um, and uh, we also run uh, stunt driving experience. This is, this is bookings, uh, booking agent driven stuff like the uh, Red Balloon and Adrenaline. Uh, we run the stunt driving experience for them. Um, we also run uh, counter-terrorist training courses for the military um, and we write uh, counter-terrorist programs and train the trainers from uh, the different police around the country as well as the SAS uh, and the second commando regiment uh, as well. So that's my background. So I've got a, um, I'm in my 31st year now. Um, so um, I've got a reasonable amount of experience. And um, our, the, the thing that we find is, that, and, and it's funny, one of the guys said earlier uh, about, uh, I remember back in the old days when cars didn't have ABS and we used to teach the drivers to stop a certain way. And then the ABS cars started coming through and we, we were teaching them to stop a different way. And now the modern ABS cars have come through uh, and we have a completely different uh, braking technique to what we did uh, 15 years ago, just because the, the, all the systems on the cars uh, are so much better than they were um, 15 or 20 years ago. And it's, um, I know I'm going on a bit, but I, um, I, I remember back in the old uh, Brocky days, we'd have uh, HSV Commodores and cars like that come and do, or HDT Commodores come and do uh, track days with us at Sandown and they'd do four or five laps. Uh, and some of you guys might remember this, they'd come into the pits with their brakes on fire and you know, a bit, the engine was a big smoldering heap of molten metal, metal and all this sort of thing. These days, you, you can go down to Avis. I don't know, plenty of our customers do it. You can go down to Avis and rent yourself a Corolla and uh, you can pound that thing around the racetrack all day um, and take, give it a wash <laughs> and take it back to Avis and they're none the wiser because, um, you know, the, the car will be still running like a clock. Um, and just while I'm sort of waffling on about that sort of thing, the problem we have with our track days these days and um, often the drivers themselves sort of don't understand this um, we've got cars lapping sand down road cut regular everyday road cars we've got them lapping in the teens and if you know your lap times at sand down uh, 15 years ago it was you know stinking hot nissan gtrs with big exhaust systems and roll cages and fat tires and they were the only sort of cars that were really getting into the teens We've got cars that you can drive up to the milk bar every day now that are uh, lapping in the teens. So um, whilst, and this is what we say on our, on our track days, whilst the cars have evolved to such a high level now, the bloody drivers are still the same. Um, uh, and, and um, you know, it's kind of, um, it's kind of uh, a little bit overwhelming when you think about it sometimes how fast um, modern road day. I'm sounding like an old person now, aren't I? Um, <laughs> um, modern road cars are, are just um, incredibly fast these days. So, talking to Vicky, um, what we've sort of come up with is um, we've come up with uh, 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 a more uh, a car control. I would call it a car control course format, other than a, an, a, a defensive driving course. Um, where uh, the areas that we'd be looking at uh, just um, uh, and and this is a sort of format this is to be honest with you I just stole day two from our counter-terrorist program so day two from our counter-terrorist program uh, we focus on uh, tire we focus on tire grip and how to manipulate uh, the available grip from a tire so those areas are um, we look at um, ABS and non-ABS and how, to, how, to, how the systems work and how you can manipulate those systems. Um, making combinations of braking and turning, um, uh, corner braking exercises, uh, slalom, everyone, everyone puts a slalom in, so I'll put a slalom exercise in. Uh, multiple direction change exercises. 
uh, which are also multiple choice direction changes exercises, but you guys don't know the direction you're going in until we tell you which direction to go in, which is uh, very difficult. Um, understanding understeer and oversteer, uh, understanding roll understeer, uh, and understanding tire slip angle. So everything we do is in the wet. We've got our own, um, we've got uh, 75,000 litres of our own water tanks at Sandown. We've got our own water truck. Uh, we've got our own water pumps and everything, and all the water that we use is um, uh, rain catchment water that we catch on the roofs at Sandown. Um, and I thought we could throw in another uh, exercise, which is also from the uh, day two of the Counter Terrace program, uh, which is called a split surface exercise. Um, where what we do is we have a, a vinyl surface on the left hand side of the car and that that represents um, ice or very slippery surface on one side of the car and normal wet bitumen on the other side of the car uh, and we'll give you a go in one of our non-ABS cars probably one of our minis that we use for the stunt driving school uh, and the car goes spinning around in circles uh, and then we do the same exercise with the ABS connected and the car stops pretty, I'd like to say perfectly straight. It'll, it'll wiggle its bum a little bit as it's coming to a stop. But this is um, for the manufacturers in particular. <clears throat> when we do this demonstration, this is um, uh, the most dramatic demonstration of uh, stability from ABS. And one of the points that we really sort of push in this kind of training is that uh, particularly with ABS, there's a lot to understand about ABS. And it's not just about braking, um, <clears throat> excuse me, ABS is not just a braking system. Um, we'll show you how uh, to manipulate ABS and use it as a stability device as well. So the focus for, for um, that we've sort of come up with is uh, the focus is on uh, car control skills, um, but also uh, having an understanding of how your car works and how the systems on the car work as well. Thanks, Kevin. I, I remember. What um, you call all of that? <laughs> yeah, no, that was great. Thank you very much. I, no, I remember too. doing um, many years ago. Actually, I did uh, your courses. I did the defensive driving and then the advanced driving. I remember the split surface. So, uh, and what you described sounds uh, sounds really good. Um, has anyone got any questions for Kevin? Whereabouts do you do the skid pan thing? We've got a um, the split surface, you mean? Oh, yeah, and, and you yeah. went down the track. Where best do you do that? Um, we um, either operate, actually most of the time, uh, we operate in the members' car park. We've got two uh, smooth bitumen pads that we've put down there, and we can park our truck uh, in the middle, and we have uh, uh, the, the pumps with watering either side, and that's perfect for us. And... Um, a lot of people go, oh, I'd rather work on the, I'm, sorry, I'm sure you'd rather work on the racetrack, but when we're working on the racetrack, we have to wait for you to do a three-point turn every time you do an exercise, and and uh, it's a bit more restrictive because you've got fences to hit and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I just say, so, I hope it's the main straight. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, in fact, uh, I could tell you the story, but I won't, of uh, an instructor that worked at Jim Murcott who reversed the uh, CEO of ice the ice car into the wall at Sandown one day <laughs> doing an exercise as well. Um, so I, I, I've got this funny thing where I, I really don't like conducting exercises anywhere near walls. I, I don't mm. know why. Yeah, they go together like um, electricity. Yeah, good idea. Yeah. The magnetic yeah. attraction. Yes. Uh, um, yeah, the old saying in driver training, uh, to make things interesting, just add water. <laughs> <laughs> with, with some of the newer uh, Lotuses, they've got different sort of stages of control. They've got the sports mode or the race mode, things like that. Um, do you get a chance, if we were to do that kind of course, do you get a chance to try it in different modes? Um, I'm not sure what that does to the ABS, whether it gets more aggressive. Some, somebody on the forum here can probably <laughs> tell me exactly what the different modes do to the ABS, but um, it might be interesting for people that haven't sort of experienced the, you know, those diff the differences in those to, to try it out. I'd be interested to see what the different modes of ABS are as well. Um, mm. Because often the systems that uh, are in cars um, for the stuff that we do 
normally they're not really so affected by switching the systems unless you're switching off the ESP and you're on a track day or you're, you're switching off the, the, the traction control and ESP and everything else on a track day. Um, it's normally sort of pretty safe to say that when it comes to, particularly when you're doing corner braking exercises and that sort of thing, which is um, more realistic than just, I would like to spend the day doing power oversteer. I could spend, I could spend every day, I've just put it out there that I could spend every day for the rest of my life doing power oversteer. But the reality is you're going to get, um, you're going to get a lot more out of um, uh, braking and ABS exercises and swerving and that sort of stuff. Uh, and often we find that adjusting those systems doesn't normally affect the car too much in the sort of stuff that we do. But having said that, someone like Bruce is now going to come on and say, oh, no, they, they <laughs> completely and, and make what I just said a big lie. Um, but typically uh, we find that switching off driver aids doesn't have a lot, doesn't make a lot of difference in the exercises that we okay. do. Yeah, it, unless, it you're, would, unless you're yeah. switching off ABS altogether. Yeah. It would be interesting to sort of see something tailored to, to the Lotus cars in particular and maybe the, the new releases and, and exigias or something like that. I don't want to yeah, cut anybody else out, but, um, you know, I've heard a lot about the, you know, the snap oversteer and they'll tend to understeer by default and things like that. So um, having a course that kind of puts you into those situations where you were understeering and you've got to sort of figure it out or trail braking or something like that. to Because yeah. I think mo a lot of us who are doing track days want to sort of get faster, but... You know, I'm actually very tentative about pushing the boundaries, you know, probably too much so. And you kind of need to know where the boundaries are to, to, to know how far you can push it. Yep. Yeah, I understand 100%. So um, there's there's no problem with us doing oversteer exercises. Uh, in mm. fact, um, just get on the topic a little bit, the, the, the military still make us do oversteer exercises. And I've got to tell you that... Um, the guys we're training are driving what's called an up-armored SUV, which is a uh, it's a five-ton uh, Toyota Land Cruiser, uh, four-wheel drive, um, and our oversteer exercises are conducted in VF Commodores, um, and we have to switch everything off that you can imagine, pr pretty much you know stripping all the every electronic driver aid out of the car, and the crappy little oversteer that we get out of these cars. Uh, and you think, you know, the, the, the days of, um, of, of massive oversteer uh, are long gone, unless, of course, you switch everything off. Um, but I don't know, with a modern Lotus, because I know with Ferraris and stuff like that, uh, you can't actually completely switch everything off. Uh, it's, it's, um, <clears throat> it's very difficult to get them in, in gigantic oversteer situations without getting... Uh, some sort of interference from the car, but as I said, I'm I'm more than happy to accommodate that stuff. So, uh, Kevin, um, thanks for those questions. Kevin, I think we we may challenge you, uh, and maybe this will be part of the the planning. Uh, yeah. That uh, uh, hopefully you're up for the challenge. Uh, we have such a variety of different cars. And our club is made up of everything from clubmen's to uh, you know, old, precious model, uh, very basic Lotus uh, to very sophisticated modern Lotus. You've got every system in that spectrum and some none at all. So yeah. uh, it'll, be, um, it'll be perhaps part of the planning once we get an expressions of interest off our members yeah. uh, to understand a bit more about what they'd like. Um, but I would really like just to probe you a little bit more on because uh, it was great, actually, you know, Sean and Phil are, are, are people that already do some track stuff. And, yeah. I, and I have no doubt we're going to have some interest from those that are in that uh, space to learn more about the it, it, driving at the limit. I, I'd really like to just hear a little bit about those that maybe are at the other end of the spectrum that, um, you know, we, we've got uh, members that you know, whose partners would love to go out for a Sunday drive. We have monthly drives, but, you know, are just maybe um, not confident enough to take the precious Lotus out for a drive. Yep. Um, the, 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 the thing with it was we, could, we can create a day where pretty much everyone's going to get something out of it. Um, and 
And normally we start with the, we start with the stuff that nobody needs. Um, and then they get to 10 o'clock in the morning. It's like, I didn't know any of that stuff. Um, so that's, that's kind of a bit of a typical day for us. Um, so normally we're going to start at the lower end and work our way up anyway. And we've done it for long enough that we can soon sort of work out where this person's at and where that person's at. And, and you can, you can sort of um, tune the course or adjust the course as you're going along um, to suit the different levels of drivers. That'd be great. Has anyone else got some questions or is there anyone, for instance, at any other questions? I've made a couple of notes ahead of the session and uh, I'm sure Kevin can uh, add to this list, but um, we've already talked about a number of the benefits of doing this sort of training. So that's great. Uh, we're understanding vehicle dynamics, how to control at the limit of grip, definitely. Um, but, you know, there's a couple of other things that I'll just throw into the mix. I think uh, definitely we've already discussed building confidence, but you know, these things are actually good fun. Uh, a little bit nerve wracking, but immense fun, especially in your own car, all right? You're taking your car out, you're learning stuff and it's good fun, isn't it, Kevin? It, it's ripper fun, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. There's people who have to work for a living. I'm not one of them. Yeah, I might, <laughs> I might come looking for a job soon, yeah. Kevin. Uh, uh, Vicky, question through you. Yeah. Uh, with, with a large group like we're lucky to have on the day, how many staff will Kevin have there to provide help? Because I'm concerned that there's always a tendency for the really keen types to thrust forward and the somewhat uh, less, or, well, let's say the less pushy types to stand back and maybe get less out of the day. Uh, is there some way of preventing that happening? Yeah, everyone gets the same. The way, um, and when you see how we do it, you'll understand. We, we, um, so we might go to a certain exercise and, and everyone would get five goes at that exercise. Or if someone was struggling with it, they might get six or seven goes at it. Um, but normally we work in groups of 10. So we have 10 per instructor. And uh, depending on the day, um, we've got, uh, you'd have a certain amount of a uh, certain amount of time at every exercise. But um, as I said, we can soon figure out where everybody's at and some people might, and cars as well, you've got to remember, you've given me, you've thrown this variety of cars at me. Um, so obviously let's just say we were doing an exercise that uh, the brand new top of the line super duper Lotus could do at 70 kilometers an hour a car that's 50 years old is not going to be, it's just simply not going to be able to perform the same way, regardless of how good that car is and regardless of how good the driver is. So that car might be doing the same exercise at 60 kilometers an hour as an example. Um, so it, it, it's, uh, you can gauge the, as I said, you can gauge the drivers and you can gauge your cars pretty quickly. Yeah. I think um, just to add to that, uh, Neil, what we might do um, is, uh, you know, after this, probably early next year, try to uh, gauge the interest, the level of interest from members for this sort of thing. And, uh, you know, who knows, we might end up with a couple of groups and that might be give us, give us an opportunity to separate, according to cars, I think is a good idea as, a, as what uh, Kevin has suggested. By the same token, it's, you, you, you get as much, often you'll get as much just by watching the other cars and how the other drivers perform uh, during a certain exercise that you get by actually participating in it yourself. Because you, you learn a lot about the different vehicle dynamics of the different cars. I'm happy. I, I just uh, have to accept the fact my car, all of my cars are 50 years older than Sean's car. Certainly. Yeah, that's uh, a very good point, Neil, and uh, we'll keep that... Um... We'll keep that in mind when we're organising this. Uh, so another thing that I think I've already alluded to uh, in terms of the benefits, this is something that's really for the whole family. Uh, you know, why not make this an opportunity to get the kids involved or the partners that would like to be driving? And one that uh, I know that Bruce is going to talk about next is uh, 
I found this sort of training a really important pathway to my interest in motorsport. I certainly didn't have any track experience, I don't know, 10 years ago before I bought a Lotus. And it was only starting out with uh, the sort of training that Kevin's talking about and then uh, taking some other opportunities um, to get more experience that I eventually started to, uh, to get track time and to, to uh, start to compete. So I think this sort of stuff is obviously a, a, um, an opportunity to develop those skills. Anything else that anyone wants to add before we uh, move on to Bruce's presentation? Any other questions for Kevin or comments? All right. Vicky, sorry, Vicky, it's Ben Rose here. I was just trying to work out how to unmute. Um, and sorry, I don't have a video you know, running. My internet connection's a bit slow. Yeah. Um, I attended, uh, I was actually very lucky to be given a track day last year. Um, and uh, Kevin was there. You might remember I was in the Alpha, uh, the little Alpha Spider uh, with all the Lamborghinis and the uh, Mercedes that were there. Uh, yeah. Fantastic day, mate. Absolutely brilliant. I can't recommend it highly enough. Thank so you. thanks very much, mate. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, yeah, so the MSCA was formed 50 years ago next year. Um, we represent uh, 12 different clubs and run track days on their behalf. We, we focus on grassroots motorsport. Uh, we're open to anyone that's got a Motorsport Australia competition license. We, we pride ourselves in running cost-effective professionally run track days in a very family club friendly um, environment. So we don't take ourselves too seriously. We're, we're, you're racing for a plastic trophy at the end of the year. Um, so it's all about just getting out there and having a good time. That's, that's the clubs that we um, are affiliated with us, which obviously Lotus was one of the founding clubs. Um, traditionally, most of our clubs are, are older vehicles. Um, again, Lotus you know, was one of the fortunate clubs that still manufactures cars today. So there's a few of our clubs that no longer, which is, you know, they're uh, obviously um, Triumph would be one of those. Um, and the Austin Healy clubs. So at least with Lotus, uh, there's certainly um, some longevity there. Um, how do we MSC, how do you get involved with the MSCA? Well, how do we get involved in running Come and Try Days? It was back in 2016. We were actually approached by CAMS to, they were, had an initiative to run some Come and Try Days. And we, as a committee, felt that it was a great idea, but to let people loose on a track without any real f form of um, training or understanding was probably uh, asking for trouble. So we developed a Come and Try program uh, we had some great help from Motorsport Australia and at the time Cam McConville was looking after um, F4 and I had got to know Cam through sponsorship with Jayco. Um, so he helped us initially to uh, develop the Come and Try program. And since then we put about 500 people through and Petrina and I, we haven't this year due to COVID, but we've gone over to South Australia uh, with the MSCA over there and, and presented our program to probably 100 or so um, South Australians. We have to speak a little bit slower um, <laughs> with the South Australians, but that we get through okay. Um, so what is, it, what is the Come and Try Day about? It's a safe introduction to sprinting. So it, it is really looking to give people an opportunity to experience a track day. Um, we do provide some basic driver training techniques. We, we run three classroom presentations, which Petrina and I take but probably the gold of it comes from our instructors, which we have some in the room with us at the moment. Phil Nicholson is one, Les Bone. Um, Guy Stevens is one of our instructors as well. Sorry if I've missed any, but um, we do use our experienced guys. Uh, more importantly, we have run some train the trainer with our ex instructors. We've again had some help from uh, Cam McConville in that space, Rod Wilson, who I worked closely with at Sagami when I was there, and he, he was a great asset, and Rob Pepper, uh, who is a trainer, um, has also helped us in that space. So we do pride the fact that we have a very consistent message with our trainers, um, and, and they all have gone through some level of training. 
So the, as I said, outlined the program, it does have the three uh, information sessions in the room, but more importantly, um, our pupils get to experience three sessions on the track. So two in their car and one session where their instructor takes them for um, a couple of laps around the circuit, which we, we added to the course last year, um, which we've found has been a great benefit. Like I've found for myself from training with you, Telling someone to break hard, what what they think is breaking hard um, is not necessarily what we believe is breaking hard. So to be able to show somebody what we mean by breaking hard and, and the lines and that sort of stuff is, is really vital. So adding that extra element of being taken around by your instructor was certainly um, a great asset. And then they get the opportunity to have a solo session at the end, which means they get to go out on the track by themselves. Um, if they would like an instructor still, you can, still can have, but we certainly strongly suggest it's nice to get out there and try and put everything together uh, on your own. Um, I talked about this before, but our instructors, we, we try and match them up. So um, it was great to have a lot of Lotus um, instructors because again, at my time at Lotus Melbourne, um, I, I did get quite a few people interested in doing the come and try day. So to be able to match them up with the Lotus owner was fantastic um, in terms of understanding the car. And they are, as I said, we try and have a consistent message so that what we're saying in the classroom is the same as what um, the pupils hearing on the track. So the outcomes, I suppose, is, um, you know, a, a positive experience. Again, it's a fun day. Um, it's a chance to be introduced to motorsport in, in a very safe environment. You know, some of the figures we've had, 98% of people surveyed recommended, said they'd recommend this event to others. And it has been a good feeder for the MSCA with about, you know, 10% of the people that do it come back. And we found it's either been with the competitors that do it or that is, um, they either have ticked the bucket list, they've had the opportunity to be on the track. Some have said, mm, this is probably not for me. Um, but we have had at least 10% of the people do it have become regulars for us. So, And I think to fair to say, without asking the guys, um, being an instructor at that event is really great too, to give back to the sport and to see people, and I'm sure, Kevin, you could talk to this, to see people that have been very nervous at the start of the day with you know, not a lot of skill, but by the end of the day, able to get around the track on their own and uh, I'm not saying they're going to be that fast but but get around the track safely have an understanding for what the difference between driving on the road and driving on a track is is for me is uh, one of the highlights for Petrina and I anyways is to see that happen is fantastic um, when are we having them next we're not running this year due to COVID it's you know not practical obviously to have 50 odd people in a classroom and people sitting in one-on-one -on -one in cars. So we, we won't be running this year, but we'll be back bigger than ever again next December at Phillip Island. So those that are keen are gonna to have to wait 12 months, but um, hopefully it's, uh, it's worth the wait. And I did have a little bit of video, but I think we're probably a bit short for time for that. Um, so that's, that's sort of it, Vicky. So, um, so any of you guys that, and girls, of course, and we have had, we, we've been speaking to Vicky and we've been speaking to Motorsport Australia about possibly having a, an all girls group. Um, it'd be great to get, you know, some of the partners along that perhaps have never experienced being on the track to, to have a go. We've had that. Um, I said a few of the Lotus customers that I had, certainly the partners had a drive and had a great day. And I won't say who, but some of them, I reckon the partners were better than the husbands behind the wheel, so, <laughs> which is not dissimilar to me. <laughs> um, the only other comment that I'd make is, is that probably for the real, ex real keen guys looking to find that couple of tents, I think some of the stuff that Mark is doing at Lotus Melbourne is worth is worth considering as well. Um, you know, since since I've left, Mark's imp implemented that, and he does bring a lot, a, a great level of experience to Lotus specifically. So I certainly wouldn't discount any of the programs that he's got in place. Um, you know, I think he does a good job there. So, so that's yes. probably it for me. Thank you, Bruce. And uh, look, I'll open it up to questions in a minute. But just on that point, that's uh, thank you. Uh, you've really. Uh, Gave us a really good insight into what you guys offer, and Kevin has provided some insight into that uh, uh, 
range of training available for everyone uh, also through driver dynamics. And I guess uh, that's, that's really important to note that what we're talking about tonight goes from everyone that maybe is just looking for understanding more about their car and how to improve their skills on the road, right up to the opportunities that exist even after a come and try day, which could be experience on the uh, on track uh, events, or uh, as Bruce has said, the driving academy that uh, Lotus Melbourne has now set up is that really advanced next step as well. So I think there's so many opportunities for uh, for everyone at every level, and I, I personally uh, think this is a welcoming and uh, enjoyable for everyone at every level. So we'd love to see and encourage everyone to be involved. Now, is there any questions that we've got for Bruce, given it was such a good presentation? I'm sure there's a couple of questions out there. Yo, Wes, you might um, unmute yourself. Okay, I'm off, I'm unmuted. Um, it's not so much a question, it's a few statements. I uh, fully agree with what Bruce was saying. Uh, he mentioned that I, along with a few of the others, were driving instructors. Over the years, and I, I think I, my first course I went to was with uh, John Bell at Sandown, actually, and um, very quickly got to know that bang for buck, a clubman is the way to go. Uh, but the dilemma is with the clubman now, if I want someone to come in with me, it's only got one seat. So I've got to find some way of learning how to drive faster. There was two ways um, I've learned personally over the years to learn to drive faster around the track. Number one, Lee Gardner's listening. Um, it was <laughs> follow somebody who's quicker than you and follow their lines. Because as we heard from uh, uh, all the courses we've done, the line is the line is the line. Um, and the first time I went around turn one under power, I thought, no way in the world will Lee Gardner ever do that. He will slide off at that speed. And he didn't. And that was the first time I ever did that speed. And afterwards, then I followed. So that was number one. Follow somebody who's quicker than you. And the second one is going right back to uh, where you're saying, Vicky, about uh, we always look at more money, spend more money on the car. It'll make it go quicker. Well, if you can get your son, who is a better driver than you, to drive your car and beat your lap times, it saves you a fortune because <laughs> it's, it's the driving skill that makes it go quicker. You can put more money into better brakes and more power, certainly, but a good driver will drive a bad car better than a bad driver driving a good car. So I'm all for doing these courses. I'm all for learning how to steer really well. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Okay. And, uh, and I think that the, the, the thing that Kevin brings is that flexibility in adapting to the day. Like uh, our day is is a great introduction, but at the end of the day, we've sort of got a big group. Um, so it's really just a, a bit of a, you know, a bit of a toe in the water. And I think, you know, if we can structure something with Kevin. He can certainly make it very adaptive around what your needs are. But to, to me, from my experience, you know, when you when when people come in and talked about what's the next performance, you know, add to my Lotus, well, you know, it, it's driver training, you know, really. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought Les's advice was very good there, Vicky, except where he started to talk about when your son goes faster. I didn't like that bit. I think I think <laughs> I might have been going off the air for a while there. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I, that's what happens. Yeah. My comment on that is uh, seeing your son go around the track in your car faster isn't as good as spending more money in your own car to go faster. <laughs> it makes you feel better, but not necessarily faster. <laughs> Sorry, Neil, I just missed what you said. <laughs> uh, I think you're coming in loud and clear, mate. Uh, I'd like to um, point out um, there was a well an article in the magazine I put two months ago maybe last but anyway recently about Petrina and uh, look Ben uh, oh, sorry uh, Bruce and Petrina do a great job at the MSCA I actually spent the day at the last come and try day as part of um, uh, writing that article on Petrina 
So it's not focused uh, purely on the Kaman tribe, but uh, what I noticed was that they, they uh, are doing a great job and um, managing um, uh, quite a great uh, classroom environment and then on track experience for people. And everyone was uh, just really, really excited about it and learning a great deal. So uh, well done. To you guys well, it's, not, it's, it's not just us like, it, it is an amazing event like we have a hundred or well, between 80 to 100 uh, entrants but we have about 45 to 50 volunteers there on the day so um and it's amazing how it all sort of comes together somehow but yeah it's it's something the msca is pretty proud of there is no substitute um for for what we call seat time in drifting uh, and it's the same with driving on the circuit um, there's, there's no substitute for time behind the wheel. Yeah, yeah. but I don't know how it's the same sort of thing when we've always been told um, you, you really need to get consistent. If you're doing a, a 140 lap and then you do a 130 lap and a 150 lap, that's not consistency. Yeah. So you really get down to be a consistent. My only problem is when you're so consistent, you know you're doing the wrong thing exactly the same place every time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're consistent and really, really slow, that's uh, and you've been doing it for a long time, yeah, there's a couple of issues there. Exactly right. So how do you know when to do something different? And that's why you do need driver instruction. You do need to follow somebody. You need to do something different. If you want to get better while you're consistent, you are consistently wrong somewhere. This is true. Yeah. yeah. Um, but typically you'll find these days you can learn a lot about it on there on, you, just by doing a little bit of research with your fingers on the internet. Um, and um, but you're right, like having the right coaching. Um, but but it, it literally comes down to doing the if you're doing all you know, you're doing all the right stuff. Uh, it literally comes down to time behind the wheel. And there's, there, there literally is no substitute, particularly when it comes to in track days driving on the racetrack. There's no substitute for time behind the wheel. Yeah, quite agree. I guess that um, tells us that we just all have to accept that we've all got something to learn, haven't we? <laughs> we need to continue to learn. Yep. Yeah, that's wrong. Yep. Mark O'Connor did make the statement a couple of years ago at a club day that a couple of hundred bucks spent on driver training would make your lap times much quicker than a couple of hundred bucks spent on your car. Yep. Yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely, and 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 yeah, hundred percent. There's always some. Um, no matter who you are, there's always something new to learn. Mm. Yeah, because if you think about it, the people often ask me about driving around the circuit. I go, it's actually quite a repetitive pastime. You're just going around the circuit doing the same thing, effectively, um, and um, you. you uh, Put your hand up, I'll, I'll, I'll ask all of you, put your hand up if you've ever done a lap where you haven't made some sort of error. Mm. And um, I reckon you could ask any, <laughs> unless you're at the Schumacher level or that sort of thing, I, I don't think there's a, a racing car driver or anyone who's driven on a racetrack anywhere in the world that's ever done a lap where they haven't made um, some sort of error. And I, I think that's what makes it so addictive. Mm, I think it was Mario Andretti that said he won the world championship because he made less mistakes than the other guys. Yes. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's about right. Yeah. 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 And the other thing, Kevin, you're talking about hours and lap times. The other thing you're doing while you're out there learning to drive, you're also learning about your car and you know that, well, your brakes are wearing down or you know why your tyre pressures were wrong or yep. you know why, and so the, the air or whatever you're doing, you get to sense when there is something different. Yeah. Nothing worse than putting new tires on and going back out and you really don't know if they worked or not. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. Uh, is there anyone else that's got another comment or question before we close off? Who, who's going to stand down on the 22nd? Yeah, me. I hey. can't wait. Can't wait. Nah. I'll be COVID checker, so keep your distance. <laughs> I still think we need to have arrows on the track so we know which direction to travel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's um, going to feel a bit strange after such a oh, long absolutely. break. Mm. 
All right. Well, look, I want to thank uh, our guests and uh, all of our members for, for all of you for coming along. Um, been a great conversation. Really looking forward to organising something for the club uh, in 2021 in regards to driver training, which uh, Kevin and I will talk about and we'll put a proposal to uh, the committee. Um, San oh, there's a message from Simon. Sandown, uh, 22nd of November is the MSCA day, Simon. There's actually a couple more dates this year, isn't there, Bruce, that are coming up? Is that right? Do you want to mention yeah. that? Quickly? Yeah, so the 22nd is basically full. And the, the only other thing we need to say, Simon, is um, due to the COVID restrictions that we're working under, we're not having visitors as such. So you can pierce through the fence, but that's about <laughs> it. So it's basically the competitors, the officials and, and a helper or tee, tee up with someone and be their helper for the day. Um, but then we're at, um, where are we? Phillip Island on the 5th of December. There's still spots for that that event. And then we're down at Phillip Island again on the 19th of December. And we're sharing that one with the Porsche Club. So the last opportunity to get on the track before the end of the year. Sounds good. Thanks, Bruce. Uh, yes, so um, Simon, if you want to be someone's garage bitch, I guess it's possible. So that's <laughs> not a nice term, is it? But that, that would be a good way if you want to come along. Um, uh, but look, um, thank you everyone. Thanks Kevin, thanks Bruce for your presentation. Thanks to everyone for joining in. It was a great, uh, a great conversation and look forward to seeing you hopefully on Sunday or at the Christmas party or even at driver training next year.